So before the arrival of Luka Doncic, the Mavericks were led by Dirk Nowitzki, who was drafted in 1998. He had led the Mavs to the finals in 2006, where they lost to the D-Wade Shaq Heat, before a long road back in 2011, where they rematched against the Heat in the finals, this time with the Wade, LeBron, Boss Super Team. And despite all odds, they were able to win in six games. After that, the Mavs made multiple attempts to return to their previous success, but failed to get past the first round even once. And with Dirk getting older, it was clear that the franchise needed a new centerpiece. And this piece came in 2018 with Luka Doncic. At just 16 years old, Luka had already made a name for himself in Europe, winning the EuroLeague MVP and taking his team to the EuroLeague Championship at 16. The Mavs saw this insane talent and traded from the 5th to the 3rd pick to get Luka in exchange for Trey Young and a future 1st round pick. And just like that, they had acquired their future superstar. They also made a great second round pick that draft in Jalen Brunson, who would soon emerge as a key star as well. But the rookie year was all Luka, as he averaged 21 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists per game, earning a unanimous Rookie of the Year award. But despite this incredible season, the team itself was struggling, leading the Mavs into making their first big trade at the trade deadline, sending Dennis Smith Jr., DeAndre Jordan, and Wesley Matthews, plus two future first round picks, to New York in exchange for Chris Tapps Porzingis, a tall shooting big that could space the floor. The hope was that pairing Luka and Porzingis would be the next great Nash and Dirk combo. But this late move wasn't enough for this season, as they finished with a 33-49 record. In Luka's second year, he only got better, this time averaging 28 points per game, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists. And with the addition of Porzingis, the Mavs made the playoffs as a 7th seed in just their second season together, where they faced a tough Clippers team in the bubble. And after an incredible battle, including this insane game winner, the Mavs were unfortunately eliminated in 6 games. Just pulls up, 3-pointer! Bang! Bang! It's good! Doncic wins the game at the buzzer. So the Mavs came into the next season with very little changes. The only major change was trading Josh Richardson for Seth Curry. And the season ended up following a similar path as last year as well. Luka once again had an incredible season coming in 6th for MVP voting, but just like last year, they lost to the Clippers in the first round. This time in 7 games and as the 5th seed. So during the offseason, it was clear things needed to change. Starting with parting ways with old head coach Rick Carlisle and leading to the hiring of Jason Kidd. Kidd brought a bigger focus on defense and maximizing Luka as a playmaker. And with this new system, the Mavericks were doing far better in the next season. But one problem came up at the trade deadline, which is what to do with Porzingis, who had been missing a ton of time with his injuries. He and Luka never really developed any chemistry because of these injuries, and he hadn't really panned out as expected. So they decided to trade him away to the Wizards for Spencer Dinwiddie and David Burdens, two players who were rarely injured. This allowed the Mavericks to close out the season with a 9-7 record, finishing 52-30 for the 4th seed in the West, with Luka averaging 28 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists. And in the playoffs, their hot streak continued, as they defeated the Jazz in the first round, and pulled off an upset over the Suns in the second round, reaching the Western Conference Finals. And although they ended up losing to the Warriors, this was a huge step for this team. Mavericks are truly Warriors in this series. No question, they were just up against a better team. Coming into the next season, the Mavericks decided to let Jalen Brunson walk in free agency and traded for a consistent big in Christian Wood. And after making the Western Conference Finals last year, expectations were very high for this Mavs team. And they had yet another good start to the season before they decided to make yet another crazy move at the trade deadline, trading for 8-time All-Star Kyrie Irving, sending away Spencer Dinwiddie, Finney Smith, and two first-round picks in the Nets. And analysts were originally confused by this move, as both Luka and Kyrie seemed like ball-dominant guards. They rated this move terribly, giving it a D grade. I'm on record and I will triple down on it now. Luka Doncic will not be happy long term with Kyrie. They're too much alike. They need the ball in their hands and they need to shoot the basketball. It's and at first, it seemed like they were right, as both Luka and Kyrie's playing style struggled to mesh as the Mavericks absolutely collapsed late in the season, going from the 4th seed in February to the 11th seed in just 2 months, missing the playoffs altogether. One of the worst regular season collapses in NBA history. Three, making quick plays, decisive plays. Not to say what he's doing is wrong, obviously not. But see, this is a quick move. So now coming to this year, expectations were mixed after last season's collapse. The one bright spot was that they were able to use their bad seed to get a good draft pick, picking up Derek Lively with the 12th pick. And this season, as you know, has been incredible, as both Kyrie and Luka have learned how to turn their offense into one of the NBA's greatest one-two punches. And once again, midway through the year, the Mavericks made yet another huge trade deadline move, acquiring PJ Washington from the Hornets and Daniel Gafford from the Washington Wizards. And these trades gave them much-needed size, rebounding, and defensive capabilities, and the Mavericks ended their season on a 16-2 run good for the 5th seed in a tough Western Conference. And in the playoffs, they've been on an incredibly difficult run, beating the veteran Clippers in the first round, the young first seed Thunder in the second round, and the hot Timberwolves in the Western Conference Finals. 
beating them all to match up against the Celtics and hopefully their first title win since 2011. Let me know if you guys want to see a video on the Celtics next and I'll see you guys then. Peace.